Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We continue with the case study presentations, which will provide critical insights about fleet connectivity and management. This presentation is about how to apply telematics to have a sustainable fleet management. Mr. Ray Warburton, Head of Mobility Services of Siemens UK, is going to talk about how to introduce telematics and how it can bring added value to fleet management. If you have any questions, please don't forget to share them via chat box. So hello, Wayne. It's great to have you here. Hello. And you can start your presentation. And okay. then Brilliant. we can have questions. Thank you. Great. So thank you very much. Um, I, I mean, first of all, a really great event so far. I've been on most of the uh, sessions so far, and I'm finding it really informative. So hope everybody else is uh, getting as much out of it as I am. And um, I guess it's just a, a nice, nice pleasure for us to, you know, from supply chain and Siemens to give you a bit of an overview and insight of, of, of what we're doing, uh, especially in the UK. Um, in terms of Siemens, um, in the UK, we've got about 14,000 employees and we've got a really diverse range of businesses that we cover uh, from healthcare, wind power, energy, digital industries, smart infrastructure and mobility. So we're, we're into a lot of uh, different uh, businesses and we're constantly changing and growing. Um, myself, I've been with Siemens 25 years. Um, sorry, yeah, 25 years and I've been in supply chain 35 years. So I, I, I've been here quite a while. And this current role I'm doing in, in terms of mobility services, I've been doing for six years and it's a really interesting role. Um, because as it says, mobility services covers fleet and travel. And, you know, the two are definitely coming more closely together now. Um, but I suppose what we're presenting today is more on the, you know, on the fleet side in terms of, uh, of, of telematics. Um, just a little bit of an overview of the, the fleet size, what we've got in the UK. So we've got about 2,500 people that drive company cars uh, and about 900 uh, LCVs, you know, uh, small vans. Um, as I said before, uh, we're into lots of different businesses. So you can imagine uh, our vans are not just like a normal delivery van. We've got some vans that have got racking and conversions in. And then we've got some vans for like the mobility division that have got, you know, massive conversions in for carrying telegraph poles and cabling and so on to do all the signaling and so on so we've got a really diverse range of of the vans and you know if you look at also uh, the wind power we've got you know vans that's going up uh, you know the side of wind farms and you know four befores and so on so like i said we've got a real diverse uh, range of the vans and the company cars um uh, you know we've got 2400 2500 uh, and that's a user chooser scheme so my presentation today is going to cover a little bit around you know what we've done some of the future challenges i see um you know some of my personal views uh and 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 really linking that back to you know how telematics can connect devices can you know assist us and improve it improve this um and i think in any walk of life data is key um you know if you're a finance person data is really key the numbers um you know from a procurement point of view the savings are always really key um but from an operational and electrification um the data is getting more and more key and you'll you'll see that when i go through my slides with some examples around we're not just using this, uh, you know, telematics data now, you know, just to improve the operational efficiency. We're really using it in terms of how we can look at electrifying our fleet, um, you know, in, in, into, we say, a control manner rather than just uh, going gung ho. Um, so I've got a few slides I'll go through. Um, like I say, they'll be very top level and uh, I do hope you find it informative. So I've probably covered all this already in terms of Siemens, um, but we've got a real strong strategic goal by 2030 to be carbon neutral. Um, so the fleet at the moment in the UK in terms of uh, scope one carbon is about 52% of that. So we already buy green energy, things like this. So there's a massive, massive focus now in terms of electrifying our fleet. And in terms of what we've currently got today, out of the 2,400 vehicles, we've only got 105 electric vehicles. So, you know, we've, we've started, which is good. Um, but in terms of the LCVs, as you see there, the numbers are very low, five. And the reason why that is, is because of the diverse nature of, you know, uh, some of the vehicles we've got. And, you know, there's no electric 4x4s out and so on. So we are at the start of a journey. I think the cars, we're doing really well in terms of the electrification journey and the vans. This is 
where some of this presentation will show you some of the work we're doing to see how we can enable this uh, data to make us the right choices for electrifying the fleet. Uh, and it will also cover a little bit in here around, you know, you know, we're already doing all the stuff that probably lots of people are doing in terms of driver safety, uh, road risk reduction, fuel savings. Um, so we've been doing, you know, a lot of the telematics that was put in the vans. We're really focused on that. And what's happening now is, you know, we, we, we that that's business as usual. We've got to make sure our drivers are, are driving safely, that they're not speeding and so on. And we have reward programs in place and so on. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, the, the more people drive uh, efficiently, then obviously, you know, the better fuel we get. So, so in a way, the first point is, uh, you know, it, it's a done and dusted thing. You know, that's that's a mandated thing that has been in place for many years. And you know, and certainly going forward, we're going to start looking at more technology, dash cams, and so on. Yeah. Um, but probably the main part of what we're doing in terms of the telematics data is you know what we're looking at is to support us on our electrification journey and that's what most of this next few slides will focus on so at the moment we uh, have, have, have got a close partnership with masternaut so that's our telematics provider uh, that started back in 2013 and um, uh, telematics, uh, sorry, Masternaut was obviously purchased by Michelin quite a number of years ago. So, you know, we've got nearly, a, you know, an eight or so year relationship with Masternaut. Uh, half the fleet at the moment is covered by Masternaut devices and the other the other parts of the fleet have got uh, several other different providers um so we have got a, a split fit, split fleet in terms of the telematics you know which does does cause difficulties but there's reasons behind why, why we've got that historical and acquisitions and so on and what we're really doing is working very closely with, with Masternaut to, you know, at the end of the day, the suppliers are the experts. You know, I'm a, I'm a fleet manager. Um, you know, I've, I've got quite a good experience in, in this area, but I'm no expert. So, you know, we're really relying on the value add that our suppliers can bring. Um, and that's what, you know, some of this presentation will, will, will cover in terms of some of the innovations, um, you know, vehicle maintenance, uh, AI on the cameras and so on. Yeah. So that's just a little background in terms of the link that we've got um, with Masternaut. And then the next slide uh, will cover a little bit of a project um, that we've done just over a year ago now. Um, so if you remember at the start, I said we've got about 100 electric vehicles uh, in terms of the cars. So I'm talking about the cars here, the company cars, not, not the vans. And we have probably of the 2,400 people, uh, half of them are what we call high business mileage drivers. So they really drive 20,000, 25,000 miles per year, service engineers, sales engineers, and so on. And going back a couple of years ago, uh, as we know, the uh, the availability of electric uh, cars with a recent reasonable range was, was, was pretty limited and it is getting better now. So this was a case study that we did um, 12 months ago. And then I will cover how we're expanding on this going forward to look at a similar thing in terms of electrification for the vans but this is predominantly uh, focusing on the cars there so as it said there um, the project was to understand the suitability of electric vehicles for high mileage business drivers and we were using um, the Masternaut Move Electric solution so I'll explain that in a little bit more uh, below and as I said there it's the high drivers they're the ones that was causing us a concern um, you know the businesses just didn't want to open up electric vehicles to these people and then all of a sudden they can't go and get to the job uh, service the job because they haven't got enough range in the battery and so on so you know some of the businesses were really concerned around just having a, a free-for-all policy where people can just go off and choose electric vehicles. So what we decided to do in fleet management was to work with Masternaut and we selected between 50 and 75 people that whose cars were due to be renewed in the next 12 months. So we didn't just say to somebody, let's do it, you know, if you've got a new car, that was pointless. So we basically selected people that was in the renewal process. So most of our cars are on a four year lease. After three years, you know, uh, there's only a year left and they're the people that we focus this pilot on and we we didn't make it mandatory we made it optional um so we said to these people do you want to be part of this pilot to work with us in the supply chain and master not to see if really you would be suitable to have uh, an electric vehicle going forward 
So the device itself, as it says there, was just a simple plug and play telematics. Uh, it's plugged into your cigarette, cig cigarette cigar lighter. And what we did in, uh, in, in the central fleet management team and with Masternart, we, we obviously administrated all this data and so on. So, so the person simply just plugged this into the car, left it in for three months. And then after the three months, we basically extracted that information out with Masternart pulled it all together and what that data gives us as it says there it doesn't just give us you know uh, you know you know the total miles it gives us absolutely everything when they're starting when they're stopping and so on and we did it over a three year three month period because that's typically you know a nice little uh, uh, subset of, of what they're doing and then what we did was we sat down with each of these uh, 100 drivers and we showed them the data so we actually logged into the uh, the the move electric tool and we actually said to them right okay on this telematics data what car are you interested in uh, i won't say which car most people are interested in because probably most of you can guess um, but they were then saying well which car are you interested in and then what we could do with them is actually show them you know the suitability of, of this car they wanted another electric car and so on yeah and it became quite clear then uh, on a heat map that there was a real cohort of people that were really suitable there were some people that were in the middle uh, and then there were some other people that just really really wasn't suitable yet because they were doing you know two or three hundred of miles a day constantly and uh, uh, we couldn't really recommend that so it was a really good thing and it was really done openly uh, with these people and and since then you know the people that's in renewal the the, the success has been you know, 30 percent plus of actually now um you know uh, you know basically you know for the next car having an electric car or they've ordered an electric car so 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 that's what we did sort of uh, 12 months ago and it it, it really really worked well um what we've done since then is uh, we're now taking all the telematics data for the vans. For, so for the 400 vans that I said before, and we're putting this into this uh, move electric tool. And obviously, instead of us selecting you know, a, a car, we're basically then looking at all the electric vans and, and seeing what's suitable. So we're just going through that process at the moment. Uh, what we've also done behind the scenes is because most of our vans go home at night. So, you know, they have to charge at home so basically what we've done is we've done a, a questionnaire to you know the end users the van drivers that take the vans home and we've asked them very simple questions you know yeah have you got a driveway um can you get your van on the drive you know is there enough space that you've got you know not got one or two cars you know do you own the property and so on and we, it's like a bit of a funneling effect and we, we funnel that down now to you know you know out of them 400 drivers we've at least got 100 that you know own the house they've got their own driveway they're willing to have a siemens wall but you know a wall box uh, installed and so on and now what we're doing is overlaying that data the suitability of them electric vans um through this tool and mapping that with these cohort of people that, that are suit that you know that, that the driveways are suitable and so on so what this has given us now is a real good plan going forward so we're not just selecting a driver nilly willy um that, that that we think might be suitable or not and we're also selecting a driver that actually wants an electric vehicle and will have an electric charge point put at home um so over the next 12 months, when some of these vans are renewed, these 100 people, this will then give us the roadmap for moving these people into electric vehicles. And, you know, 2030 is quite a way off. But at the end of the day, if we can get, you know, 100 electric vans in the next 12 months out of the 900, at least we're starting on that journey. And we know these people, if they're charging overnight, they then don't need to worry about, you know, charging on the public network, which we know um, is not always reliable and so on. Yeah. So it was a really good case study of using the plug-in devices to test it for the company cars through the move electric tool and then what we've then done is the hardwired devices that's in the lcvs we've taken that same data and and, and analyzed that and then we've got a nice roadmap then um for, for how we're going to electrify the vans going forward so we're not guessing the data uh, and the, the driver survey is giving us the real key answers um of, of how, how how we move and it's also enabling us to select the right electric van as well um, you know not just from size payload 
um but, but obviously key is, is the range so 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 it's been a really good exercise and the businesses that we've been working with are, are really appreciative of this work and i guess this is the changing role of a fleet manager now we're not just here to manage you know uh, the savings uh, and the relationship with the suppliers but we're here to to, to truly look at innovation and, and best practice using technology like this to really bring value add and in a way it's taking you know supply chain and fleet management for me is up, up that value chain yeah we're not just seen at the end of the chain you know we're, we're really bringing value add to it and these examples have, have, have truly done that i've got a few more slides then in terms of you know where we're at and where we're sitting so obviously this is you know, probably bread and butter for lots of people so we obviously make sure um from the data that the drivers you know uh, are, 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 you know are behaving they're not speeding they're not cornering and so on uh, and obviously out of that you know we can make sure you know against the you know a customer benchmark that we you know we're constantly trying to overachieve that and then if you look at that against uh, the speeding again you know we, we, we're under that in terms of speeding uh, and it goes without saying you know if people drive you know more, more efficiently uh, more safer then you, we, we, we've got a really good uh, fuel saving there so that's just a snapshot of you know uh, you know the 400 vehicles that's that's on this fleet um so probably nothing exciting there for most people but uh, as i said it's probably the bread and butter of most of the telematics in the past in terms of what we're looking at for the future um you know we're, we're definitely going to start rolling this um you know analysis out looking at what we need to do uh, in terms of electrifying the fleet um, we're going to start looking at how we can integrate some of this uh, data, this maintenance data into our leasing provider. Um, as it says there, you know, that will help, you know, speed fault resolution, uh, you know, and avoid vehicles being driven when there's active faults and so on. Because your drivers are human, they've got a job to do, you know, that, that fault light goes on and, you know, a lot of the times they'll carry on driving it for the day or sometimes for weeks. And then the vehicle's out of warranty and then Siemens has to, you know pay pay four thousand pound for a new engine or something so we, we, we're going to start looking at that going forward uh, but it's not something we've really actively started on to be honest at the moment um we're implementing uh vi digital vehicle checklists across all the vans um so again just as it really says there at the moment they uh the vans are inspected each day just on a, a manual paper uh, and in this age, we don't, shouldn't really have manual paper. And the great thing about this digital checklist is that um, it, it is time stamped and controlled. So if somebody just quickly says, oh, swipe through, you know, in, in a few seconds, then we know that they've not properly gone and walked around the vehicle and so on. So A, it's making it digital, B, it's making it foolproof, uh, and C, it's making it fully auditable. And then I guess the last bit in terms of uh, future rollout, you know, we will start looking, you know, as probably a lot's been presented today on, you know, the use of the uh, the AI cameras going forward, you know, to, to, to recognize when people might be getting tired and so on. So uh, we've started a good journey. We, we put the telematics in more so from a health and safety point of view in the past, uh, you know, um, that's gone really well. That's helped us in terms of improving our, our fuel and driver safety. Uh, we've done some really good work in terms of, you know, using the data to uh, definitely electrify the fleet in a, in a in a control manner. And then obviously going forward, we're going to, you know, look at what else we can get, you know, uh, from 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 our telematics providers, um, you know, in these areas to to, you know, to improve the efficiency and, and safety in lots of areas. So I hope you found that interesting um and i don't know where i'm at with time or where i've talked too quick or too slow uh, but i'm just open to questions if that's okay yes we have some time like 10 minutes and there's okay, one question one question uh, for you wayne um, from okay. mr nikola wuchkovic uh -huh. what was the main stoppers or resistant yeah. points points during project implementation and how you manage data privacy topic yeah yeah i mean you, you've just two sides to the coin in terms of the vans uh the data privacy and is not such a big issue so when we put all the telematics in the vans you know you have to go through your your, your unions and workers councils and so on uh but at the end of the day we're providing that that van 
um, the van's 100% a tool to do the business. And, you know, Siemens and all companies in the UK have got a duty of care to make sure that the people, you know, uh, are driving driving uh, safely and so on. So it, prior to any installation, you know, we have to go through the unions, workers' councils to get approval. Uh, and we only keep that data for a 12 months period. So the data is only stored um, for a 12 month period. Um, so, so the vans is, is, is fairly straightforward. When it comes to the company cars, it's a whole different world because at the end of the day, that, that individual has chosen the, the car they want. They're paying, um, you know, benefit in kind, tax towards it to the UK HMRC and so on. So even though the car is not theirs, you know, they're, they they feel the car's there and they're allowed to use it for, for personal use. So that's why we only made the uh, plug-in device optional. So we didn't um, actually mandate it because if we'd have tried to mandate it, um we 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 wouldn't have got anywhere so so that's what it was it was basically showing the people you know here, here's a device plug it in uh, then we can analyze the data after three months if you don't want the data to be seen at weekend and so on uh, or at nights just unplug the device simple as that so it was really foolproof and we didn't have anybody uh, out of the pilots, uh, you know, the hundreds of people, there wasn't one person that had any problem with, uh, with with data or data retention. And obviously, after the three months, we made sure that data was was deleted anyway, and you know, and it, and went back to them and confirmed the data was deleted. Do you think that there is going to be a trust issue um, in data privacy in terms of? Yeah, data? I mean. Yeah, I mean, with 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 a, with a GDPR that came in a couple of years ago, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, the UK legislation it really did put a massive focus in terms of data, and you know, we every single supplier now that we we do, we have to go through, um, uh, should we say, a privacy impact assessment. So we have to look at what data we're sending them, how we're sending it, uh, is it secure? You know, is it uh, you know, is it anonymized as much as we can? Are we only send in the minimal amount of information. Um, what's the retention process? You know, when's it going to get deleted? And then it also goes into the infoset, the information security of the suppliers. We need to make sure the suppliers have got secure uh, IT platforms that can't easily be hacked because that's where, when there's a data leak, um, you know, it's it's when the information, you know, the, the supplier uh, can get hacked. And I think I've read recently over 75 percent of data hacks within businesses are from the, you know the supply chain first and second tier so that's why we we, we do heavily heavily infosec uh, information security uh, checks uh, on all our suppliers and you know that wasn't around sort of three or four years ago it really wasn't and the uh, you know the, the gdpr uh, the data protection act that came in a couple of years ago has really has really risen that you know brought that to the attention now so when we're selecting a supplier when we're going to tender uh, you know probably in for second data data privacy is you know, is up there now as number one because it, it's got to be done well we have questions keep coming in so okay. um Another one is, is Siemens UK considered as a pilot or benchmark in connected technology for other countries where Siemens has a fleet? Uh, we share our best practice. So uh, across across the globe, uh, we, we have monthly fleet meetings. And so this information gets shared. Um, I, I guess we're probably up there and hence the reason why, you know, uh, you know the fleet team in Germany asked me to present today, um, so so I wouldn't say we're you know number one, but I do think we're we're looking particularly on the electrification side. I think we're I think we're we're, we're probably up there with you know one of the leading companies, but uh, countries. But that's just my personal opinion. Okay, another question about AI cameras, how yeah. they could help out to run the fleet operations smoothly. Yeah. Uh, like I said, this is something we're only just starting to look at. Uh, we've only got a small number of them in. 
Uh, and you know, for me, it's, it, it 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 comes uh, it's the health and safety side. I, you know, I, I think on this one, where you know, um, you know, it, it, you know, the internal cameras, um, you know, can clearly see when somebody's getting tired, and you know, can send alerts and warnings and so on, uh, as well as the you know the you know, the forward cameras in terms of uh, accident management and how people are driving and so on. So, so I think there's there's two sides to it. You know, there's the uh, you know the, the protection of people uh that's on the road and then there's also the protection of the you know the seamers driver that's driving that vehicle so 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 for me they've got a really good um uh, you know a really good uh proposition for them uh but again this one's you know a bit of personal data as well isn't it again you know when you've got a camera monitoring somebody in a car and you, you're into a whole new world of personal data and so on uh so so that's why we're just starting looking at this one to be honest Okay, another one. What could telematics suppliers do better to make your connected fleet journey more seamless? Yeah, uh, I, I mean, uh, I think, you know, the work we've been doing with, you know, the, the supplier master, not, I think we've both been learning. Um, I, I say the electrification of, of the fleet for me is it's like learning to ride a bike again. You know, it's like a complete new learning that we're having to do in terms of, you know, uh, all the electrification so it's like riding a bike and we've got one stabilizer off and i've got one stabilizer on and i'm going up the road in a little squiggly pattern and at the end of the day our suppliers are the experts in this area and we really need them to come up with the innovation and the solutions and the technology to to help us succeed uh, you know uh, and, and 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 the proof of the pilots we've done on these is you know you know this supplier has stepped up and worked closely with us we've learned and they've learned and that's what it's all about the electrification journey nobody knows everything and people are learning and it's just a case of sharing the best practice mm -hmm. okay i have one question from my side so yep. during the presentation you mentioned the importance of data it's not yes. just to increase the operational efficiency but also yep. helping the police electrification so yeah. how shall uh, fleet managers apply it for fleet electrification in future? Yeah. And again, I, I see this as the role of a fleet manager is changing. You know, um, we, you know, in the past, it was all around savings and, you know, maybe supplier performance. Um, now we've got to take care of, you know, all the infosec stuff. And, you know, we need to look at digitalization. And so everything that goes with it and data is the key to making the right or wrong decision. And if you haven't got that data and, you know, the, the tools to analyze that from your supply chain then you're doing it blind so for me is it it's the number one thing uh, is having that data and be able to analyze it review it to make the right decisions because otherwise you could be opening up your fleet to, to to totally the wrong strategy you know you might select the wrong electric vehicles or long electric vans uh, and once you've got them vans and you're on a you know a four-year lease you've, you've got them and it, it's very costly to get rid of them so data is key to make that right decision going forward Thank you. And one last question. So you have a large fleet and you are moving forward with converting your fleet in, into fully electric. And yes. what is your expectation in future in Europe generally in fleet electrification? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the cars will be OK. They'll happen. There's more. Everybody knows there's more and more electric cars on the road. And, you know, in the UK, I've had an electric car for a year and, you know, I'm seeing far more electric cars around because they've, they've also got a little green number plate at the front now, uh, which is really nice. But I'm also seeing it on the charging network, you know, 12 months ago, you could charge your car more or less anywhere, whereas now most of the charging networks you know around the service stations are full. So the cars will be fine. We'll meet that 2030. Uh, target and I think what the UK's government's doing in terms of investing in infrastructure you know lower company car tax is really helping um, you know to move that forward that the vans you know I'm just being honest the vans is the real the real issue uh, you know um, you know the van technology in terms of electrification's at least two to three years behind where the cars are may, maybe slightly more and if you look at it at the moment there you know if i was to replace our current fleet with an electric vans i couldn't do it because there's no four before electric vans there's no bigger bigger electric vans that can carry the payload and so on so the, the real headache in the next few years will definitely be um you know the, you know electrifying you know the lcv fleet without a doubt and i don't think any other company is different than siemens in that in that instance 
Okay, so we reached the end of our session. Thank you very much, Wayne, for the presentation and all the information you shared with us. And Pleasure. Our participants can contact you via email for uh, other questions, and there are some yeah. more questions actually, but we have to keep up with the schedule. Yeah, so thank well, it's well, okay. Yeah. I'm on LinkedIn, so if you need to get in touch with me, do it that way. And thanks everybody for listening. Okay, thank you, Wayne. Thank you.